boom and of course another one for the youtube first off if you're new to the youtube channel make sure you guys subscribe for uh, new content and better content and stuff like this all the time so you don't miss any updates now of course today is round four round four and this one is called winning in london with joe bava winning in london with joe bava right now of course you remember the other one is first time in london with joe bava this one is winning in london with joe bava so that should give you a little bit about how this game gonna go now okay i'm playing with the white pieces here this is round four i'm playing international master pablo de morte so to be honest pablo had a really bad tournament really bad tournament especially the first four to five games why the names in all caps that's what the pgn had so pgn had it in all caps hey whatever i didn't do that but uh he had a really bad tournament but that doesn't stop him from playing really good chess he still is an international master regardless of the result he did he's still an im with that being said it's white to move let's see what happens all right and that's because you got you i got you bro i played you know uh joe baba d4 he goes knight f6 i go knight c3 he goes d5 bishop f4 and then he goes c5 which is 100 regular theory here one thou i'm literally whipping out the moves not even thinking twice about it i go e3 he takes on d4 i used to play this line actually as black here and after takes he plays a6 which is one of the standard lines of playing and here if you don't know what you're doing either for both sides you will get in a lot of trouble so knight f3 now guys this this game is 72 moves long game so i'm actually gonna fly through the first part so this video don't be two hours so after knight f3 right knight to c6 okay now i will ask you here though it is white to move you got a few choices you can make here what do you play in this position white to move what do you play chat this one's on you what do you do yeah bishop d3 from a doc did i get the norm not in nope nope in fact there was only two people in in 20 20 people and uh, only two people got norms from two separate sections in the im ones bishop b2 prepare bishop d3 that is uh, definitely a possibility a3 bishop d3 bishop b2 okay i've seen this before a3 you can play a3 which is totally an option all right what i play here though is 95 95 is book move 95 is theory so i'll do something dumb like 95 but what's funny is that's the move big large wow so 95 is the move big fella is 95 this is the move here so if knight takes you already in trouble you're losing the pawn basically so 95 is the move right he can capture but he usually doesn't you also see stuff like bishop 2 f5 or bishop d7 he played e6 here which is still theory once again i'm whipping out my moves here knight takes c6 b takes c6 and knight to a4 knight to a4 controls the c5 square if you look at I don't remember what round it was, but Charlotte earlier this year, when I played with the black pieces, in fact, I was playing something similar to this in a C3 Sicilian where I played the G6 line. In fact, it's labeled if you go to my um my YouTube channel and you look at that playlist for Charlotte, uh for Charlotte, I don't remember which one. I don't remember the name of it. It's not the most recent one, but there's another Charlotte IM tournament one. And it was uh the longest game I've ever played. That's the name of the video. It was like a hundred something moves. But I had a problem here, and there was a knight on e5 and c5. So this is actually theory. From the white side here, this is for real theory. So with that being said, right, of course, um, oh, this is a different part. I don't know what part that is. Okay, so knight takes, b takes c6, knight a4, he goes bishop d6. Again, still theory here. Still theory. I take, he takes, and we're just going to get to the real part. Because again, guys, this is 72 moves. This was a grind. So he played queen takes d6. Again, I'm following theory. Bishop d3. You have two moves here. e5 or castling. Those are the main moves. e5 or castling. If e5 happens, I capture. Queen takes, queen e2. Queen e2. And then after captures, king takes. I now have, yes, it's an end game. But I'm more familiar here. I have the knight c5 option coming. I have c3, b4, a4. Trying to use a little bit of majority. Even knight b6 with captures. And also bishop takes a6 is in the future rooks come to the center of the board and my king can kind of just tuck wherever right with that being said he didn't play this but i was prepared for it so he actually played castles right and why not bishop because you want to connect the rooks easily and when the queens come off the board that's a good question by the way why not taking with the bishop taking with the bishop i can do which i could castle steal but king takes are automatically connects my rooks 
this tempo equals time. And when, you know, the, the more time you have, the better the position is going to be. The more you can do, the more options you have. So king takes e2. Queens are off the board. I'm not worried about anything, literally. So with that being said, he didn't play this option. He went with the castle option, which gives more life to the position. After castles, I castle as well. And he did play e5. Very good move. Excuse me, again, still following theory. He takes on e5. Takes back, or I take on e5, and he takes back, and then queen f3. Queen f3 is again theory. Now, the theory move here is rook e8. After rook e8, the theory move again is queen g3. Weird enough, queen g3, like, queen g3, what the heck is this, right? After captures, captures, in fact, white is just a slightly better. In fact, it's an equal game, chances for both sides. But I like the fact that his structure's, his structure's messed up. Yes, mine is too, but this isn't that relevant. I mean, this is the same side. And if you understand end games and you study a lot of end games, you start to realize, I mean, this is the same side. So, yes, this is double, but nothing's ever going to happen when this is a healthy structure. C5 is weak. Your bishop is bad due to the three pawns on the light squares. So I have prob you have problems and it's easier for white to play. In fact, I even have a clear cut plan of playing something like F3, King F2, trying to trade the pair of rooks. Once that's done, King E3, D4 to C5. And I just have an active king. There's all kind of things that can happen here as white. With that being said, though, right, after the theory would be so deep, man, big facts, bro, like straight up. After queen of three, play bishop e6. This is not a move that I've ever seen. I ain't even seen it in the database, to set to be the least. This is some real stuff, bro. You know, in game, hey, man, you know, working on GM every day, my guy, big facts. So after queen of three, bishop e6, he goes bishop e6. And now what would you play in this position? It is white to move. I knew that this was not theory or at least anything that I've ever studied. So I knew I was like, okay, I kind of got him. I kind of already got him in a way. Now, of course, Inge says, bro, it's not even half a pawn. It's 0.32. But with that being said, hey, look, man, I know that the moves here in that position was rookie eight. That was the usual move. So he didn't play it. He played bishop e6, which is totally fine. So, okay, I'm going to improvise a little bit. What do we do? We have knight c5. I see rook e1, instant move. Okay, rook e1 for certain. Which rook? Which rook? And why? Which rook? What are we doing, folks? F E1. Okay, rook F to E1. I got rook E1 for certain. Actually, no, I like knight C5. Okay. Rook A to B1. Uh, a, rook A B1 doesn't do anything. This, this pawn's already defended. Knight c5 does hang, hang b2, which I guess a6 is hanging, but I'm not trying to give him that pawn. I did go rook after e1. Good job. He goes queen d6. Okay. Now, white to move again, chat. What do you do? You don't trap the f rook. That's right. Queen d6. What do you do? White to move. White to move. I'm going to tell you what the engine says, too, as well. Rook a to e1 uh, here? I mean, rook a to d1? Is that what you mean? Dr. Juliano, you can go to D1. E1's already occupied. Queen E3, maybe, from Flame. H3, okay. H3 stopping any Bishop G4 or Knight G4 options. I like it. Queen G3 from Big Mar. Knight to C3. Knight to C3 is absolute 100% premium Cambodian face blockage. It is also a very garbage move. You should not be doing that in your life. Why? We went A4 just to go back to C3. What is he doing with his life? That man is 100% garbage. Big facts. So, this is not a thing. Queen D Knight C3 is not a move. Don't even think about it. Don't even think about it. You want to get to C5 or B6. Minimal. Minimal. You have to improve the knight. Knight C3 is no good. But, the move that is good, in fact, are three moves. You have B3, which is engine. And you have a uh, queen e3, which is engine as well. And you have the move that I played, which is queen to g3. This is the move that I remember from my theory and studies. And it makes the most sense. Again, if he takes on g3, I'm just a favorite here. I'm a favorite. And if knight to d7, I would, this is going to be straight in game. Straight in game. My plan here, my plan is to play stuff like b3 or even b4 and play c3 and a3 and knight to c5 eventually. Right, because I'm also get well, this is what I calculated. If I play b4, right, and he plays something like a5, I play a3, right? He takes, takes, and then the knight can come to c5. In many cases, my knight can come to c5, rook b8, maybe knight c5 immediately, takes, takes, and I was gonna play this way. And the fact that okay, this could be a draw, 
I also had stuff like, you know, if I didn't want to play that, I could play C3 or B4 first, A5. I have to go A3 because C3 is, uh, this is hitting the knight. But my idea was to get the C5 and get my rook to B1. Regardless, my goal is to gill B4, knight C5, rook B1, rook B6. That's the plan. If he ends up taking the rook on B6, then I have a pass pawn. Deep into the position, B7, taking all A6 is an option with the rook to follow. And I have a pass pawn to help. My king is only a moment's notice away. His is too, but there's a lot going on, right? So I had these plans in mind. I had these plans in mind. So after queen g3, he did not take. And you have to calculate always all the lines. If he takes it, then what? If he doesn't take, then you have something else. Um, and when black plays knight d7, you want to play f4 to play f5. I mean, it's not necessary. I guess you can. But, I mean, he could just play g6, right? You know, you always have to think about what's the counter. If you ever have a move, what is the counter to that move, right? So takes, 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 knight d7. I mean, f4, that looks cool. But after f4, he just goes g6. And then, like, then what? You know, you don't even play f5. You can't play g4. I mean, I can't walk the king up still. But, again, this is almost in a way, maybe not a wasted move, but not a necessary move, right? Not a necessary move. So queen to g3, he plays queen b4. He said, I didn't want to trade. I don't like that. I don't like the fact that I'm on defense. He, that's what he said. And after queen to b4, white to move, chat. I thought a while here. I did think a while. And of course, queen g3, I had to, I had to calculate what if he doesn't take and play queen to b4. So I did see this. He played queen b4, and I did instantly, in a way, play my move here. But what is my move, chat? White to move. Yo, Canty, what's up? Duff. Doe of the darkness. What's up, bro? B3, I guess, is forced. Okay. B3. That's right. B3. You guys are right. Unanimous. It is B3. Right? Because I'm not trying to move the knight. Right? I don't know. I don't know. I don't want to move this at all. He plays rook after e8. And then what do you do, chat? What do you do now? And I, I spent some time here. Because I was I was debating between two different moves. I was debating between two different moves. It's white to move. What do you do now? What do you do now? Okay. So we have A3 from Doe. C3 from Elevation. Rook A to D. Okay. From Flame Pelt. C3 from PJ. C3, C3s, C3s. I like it. You guys are correct both ways. In fact, C3 is the number one move. But here's why I didn't like C3. I didn't like C3 because this queen goes to A3. And right now, believe it or not, the engine says the best moves are these three. H3? Are you serious, bro? Who's playing H3? Bruh. Garbage. 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 Nobody's playing H3 here. Uh, and then the other move is rookie two. Okay, I mean that, that's kind of the same to me. And F three, bro. I'm not playing any of these moves. Garbage. Like straight up, bro. I'm not doing this, right? And this queen is so annoying on A three. So what I chose is I had to take away the A three square. I played A three because this that was so annoying with his queen on A three. So because I can't dislodge it, I just can't. So I have to do something else. That's what the engine said. Play C3 and just play, you know, I know your game going to go 70 moves, but it's going to be an extra 30 if you play C3. Like, get out of here, bro. You have lost your absolute. So I play A3. He goes Queen A5, and this is where it gets nuts. Right here. Now, this still went 70 moves, bro. 70 moves. A very long game. But I played A3. He played Queen A5, and I saw this in advance. This is what I was going for. It is why to move, chat. What do you do now? What do you do now? Queen doesn't go to a3 now, but there are some strange moves. And I actually thought, I probably thought like 15 minutes here, maybe 20, because I had to calculate all of the moves that can happen after I make this next move. Queen d6, b4 is a, maybe an interesting maneuver. Knight to c3, meow with the follow. Queen e3 from red, hi mama. b4, all right, okay. Big Marmo said, hey, okay, b4. Okay. Okay. B4, 100% garbage. garbage. Wow. Garbage. That is not a move. Garbage. Try again. Garbage. Take it back. That is not a move. B, oh my goodness. B4, I'm going to take these and not even think twice about it. What is wrong with him? What is wrong with him? Sheesh, big fella. That's not a move. That's not a move. 
So, b4 is not it. Try again. Queen d6. We have queen h4. Queen h4 is here. Okay. Okay. <laughs> you know our, uh, you know me, fella. Queen h4. Knight to c3. Okay, knight to c3 with the intention of a queen takes, bishop takes. But you have to think about what does the knight do on c3? Nothing at all. Nothing at all. It's just a knight. You can have another one later. <laughs> Bruh. <laughs> Playing in the open section with the big dogs. It's just a piece, bro. Just give it to him. You know what I'm saying? It'd be all right. It'd be all right. He's just an IM. Yo, what? Somebody get your mans. Somebody get him. Put him on suicide watch. Ricky five. Okay. Queen A5. Ricky three. That's a move as well. What I did here, chat. What I did here was queen to d6. This was the whole idea. The whole idea is to play queen d6 to attack this. I have knight c5 options. I have queen c5 options. I have b4 options at the right moment. Not blocking with your whole face and hanging this knight. But queen to d6 attacking this pawn. There was a lot I thought about here. Queen d6 is a very strong move, right? And what I was thinking about the longest is this right here. This is why you have to calculate all lines and even consider what you don't consider. I teach that to students a lot. Bishop to f5 is a move, believe it or not. And this is what I spent the most time on is thinking he's going to play this move. Look at this move, right? First off, he's starting mate. I'm almost, but I can block with bishop f1, but this is not fun. So I had to think, do I take first or do I play queen b4? Or do I play b4? Because b4 is actually an option as well. And then taking, and then taking, right? Or do I play rook takes e8, then play b4 and take on f5? Or do I take on e8, play bishop takes, but that's actually made on e1, so that doesn't work. So rook takes e8, followed by rook takes, right? And if rook takes, then I play b4, queen takes, and then bishop takes f5. Or should I take on f5, but again, that's rook takes. So you, you only have like two moves, rook takes e8 or b4. Even queen b4, which is another move. And I didn't like queen b4 because of this option here. After takes, takes. Actually, no, there's a rook takes e1 first. Rook takes e1 first, and then rook takes, and then queen takes. Um, pawn takes, bishop takes. I really didn't like this that much. I feel like something was wrong here. Where like, you know, this is going to teeter out to the draw. And I don't want to draw here. I just didn't want to draw here. Right, where he can go rook b8 and I get one, you get one kind of idea. And we shaking hands, signing score seats in a few moves. So I wasn't trying to do that. I wasn't trying to do that. So here, in fact, I would have went with this option, which is rook takes. And then I was looking at the b4 option. And then after b4, queen takes, queen takes. But well, strangely enough, he has queen takes a3, which is annoying, threatening mate on e1, which is kind of annoying, kind of annoying. So at this case, right, I would have to go queen b4 anyway. And then after takes takes, I was looking at this situation after takes takes, and he still could go rook to b8 um, in this situation. In fact, it just says d4, nobody's playing d4. But rook to b8 and then knight c5, I saw rook takes and rook takes. And I saw this position where I was like, okay, maybe I have this. Maybe I can push for more in this type of end game. Right, I'm calculating all of this, right? So after queen to d6, he doesn't do any of it. In fact, he plays rook a to c8. So I'm like, bet, let's go, cool. You ain't trying to go for none of the comps, complications? Sweet, sweet, bro, let's go. So you play rook a to c8. Now in this, in this situation, chat, you got a few moves you can make here. It's about to get very wild, in fact. It is white to move. What do you do now? Again, this move, this one's 70 moves. You don't move 19. White to move. What do you do? Queen c5, knight c5 from PJs. Okay. Queen c4, I mean c5. I would do knight c5. Okay. Knight c5. Yes. Knight c5 or f4. Okay. All right. We got b4. Right. Okay. Psy Pikachu. Look at you. Look at you. Who gets you? Garbage. 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 100%. 1,000%. Get the man off the board. Sheesh. Never gonna work. You're garbage. Yeah. It doesn't work. And of course, he did say jokes in there as well, though. So, after rook a to c8, though. Rook a to c8. Knight to c5 is a possibility. I did not like knight c5. Exactly. Rook c to d8. This is what I saw. After knight c5, I saw this move. Rook c to d8, and I thought this was cool, right? I was like, oh, I can hit it with knight b7, right? Knight b7, hitting, right? That's a nasty move. 
He takes mine, I take yours, I'm hitting a6, but then he plays c5, and I'm like, dang, this is a draw. He's defending, I go knight b7, he plays rook b6, right? Actually, sorry, rook c6, because that defends the pawn. He defends everything, and now it's just a draw. Like, again, I'm not looking for a draw here. So, um, so uh, this is a different position. Okay, so rook a to c8, um, I play queen to b4 instead of knight c5. Queen b4, with the possibility of still playing knight b6 and knight c5. Very nice move. I love this move. And if he takes it, which I was hoping for, if he takes on b4, a takes, right? And now knight c5. And I was looking at if rook b8, I can play knight c5. And then if rook takes b4, I have rook takes a6, hitting this, right? If rook c8, obvious, e6 is hanging. Get the man off the board. This is a family channel. So if he goes bishop d7, though, I had this nasty combo. I think I was going to double up or play rook. I don't remember. What was I going to do? Rook a7, no. I think I was doubling because I'm threatening. Yeah, I was going to play this move because I'm threatening knight takes d7 and rook takes c6. So I thought he would play rook c8. After rook c8, I can play knight takes, I think, or rook a8, something like this. But obviously, I'm pressuring him. I'm the one with all the play, right? This is what I was going for. I'm the one with all the play. But after queen b4, he didn't like all of that. He didn't like the fact that I just got to defend. So he backed up and played queen to c7. But at this point, I'm going up a full pawn ski. I took those and didn't even think twice about it. He played c5, which is a very nice move. And now, chat, it's on you. Now, <laughs> believe it or not, there's 50 moves from here. Right now, there's 50 moves still from right here. Long game. But he played c5. And you need to be careful. You need to be very careful here. Black seems kind of passive. He is. He's kind of passive, but knight g4 at a moment's notice could be kind of scary. You are provoking some weaknesses, and if you play g3, there's knight e5 with the intention of knight f3 and bishop g4 and trying to get into the house real quick, my guy. So you need to be very careful where you put this queen at. Where are you going? Queen b7's got Gatowski. Gatowski, thanks for the follow. Queen d2, we got queen b7. Okay. Queen B7s. His weight can't do that yet. Queen B7 is not looking that good, to be honest, guys. Queen B7 is not the move you want to make. In fact, after something like Queen F4, he kind of just all in here. And like, I don't have any shelter to defend this. And my queen looks kind of nuts over there on B7. Like, what is it doing? Right? So, let's see what else I got. Queen B5. Yeah, Queen B5 is equivalent to Queen B7. Looks totally ridiculous here on b5. Queen h4. I thought about queen h4, but I didn't like knight e4. Also, the fact that I'm not threatening anything. I thought this was very, very common, but I was like, you know what? What's the best move here? Like, what can I do for real? Queen h4. We have c4. We have queen c3, pawn c4, queen h4. In fact, this is the move, the number one engine move, move I played as well. Flame got it right here. Queen c3, bow. Hitting queen c3, I'm hitting c5, and I'm hitting the rook still. The rook has to move if you want to keep your material. Right, you could play d4, and if d4 happens, I think I was just going to move the queen to like f3 or g3. Yeah, if d4 happened, I was going to go queen g3 and force a queen trade when I'm up a pawn in an end game, and I have a pass pawn. This should be completely winning. Engine agrees as well. So after queen c3, there was a cool move. Rook a8. And now Chad is on you. He plays rook a8. My bishop is hanging. What do you do about it? Your bishop's hanging, chat. What do you do? What do you do? Even here is like 40 moves left. Queen takes c5 from a doc. Hey, what else we got? He played rook a8. Bishop b5, okay, that is a move from fuzzies. We got bishop b5 from Forza. Kc5, that's king c5, but I know you mean knight. You would play knight c5. We got queen takes c5. Queen c5 is a bad move. Queen takes c5 looks nice. Engine, I agree. We got bishop c3, queen c5, queen c5. Thanks for the follow, Rod Gilly. Bishop c3, knight takes c5. Okay, bishop d3. B5 with the bishop. Lots of choices here, right? No what it's no unanimous. Nothing unanimous. Nothing unanimous here. Okay. 
Knight takes c5. All right, so let's check knight takes c5. Okay. Okay. Garbage. 100%. Thousand percent. Oh, my goodness. What are you doing with your life? Rick takes a6. Sheesh. What is this man doing? Wow. I'm going to stare at you real hard while you think about your next move. I'm going to continue to stare at you until you resign. Garbage. Not a move. Not a move. So you have to play queen takes c5, which is much better. Queen takes c5. So now if rook takes a6, your queen's hanging. I'm going to get the man off the board. And if queen takes and I take c5, I'm up a clean two, meaning a clean two pawns. Like I'm up two pawns for literally nothing at all. Queen takes c5. Perfect, right? So I took with the queen. But I knew he was going to go for the counterplay here. Of course, he's an international master. And he's down two pawns. He has to go for the counterplay. So he went queen f4 with the idea of saying, hey, you are weak over here. Because all your pieces over here on the other side of the board looking kind of crazy. With that being said, I played bishop f1. I backed that boy up. All the way up. And I calculated all of this, by the way. And I'm going to show you what the engine says that I could have did a lot of better here. But I played bishop f1 with the intention of after knight g4... Well, you have to stop me. Come on now. So G3 is the only move. Knowing he's going to play Queen H6. And this is the whole idea of playing Bishop F1. Because now I can play H3 without him taking it on H3. Ben Feingo is happy. Correct. Shout out to Feingo. He's happy right now. Bishop F1. That's right. So now I can play H3 to defend the H3 pawn and also attack the knight at the same time. He backs that boy up. And right here, I had a series of moves that I could have played. I actually just went for the easier route of like, yo, I want to get this pressure off me. So, I'm, you know, this is what I was thinking. I need to get this pressure off of me. But you do have other moves here. In fact, what do you play in this position, chat? What do we do? What do we do? W, E, 3. Wow. What piece is that? W. Oh, didn't he say queen, E, 3. Okay. Where's the chest? Queen e3, h4. I guess h4 could be a possibility. King h2. Oh my goodness, Daniel. Daniel, don't do that to yourself. They said to follow cruel prince. Bring your knight back into the game. I gotta start playing back in NBA. Chicago, yes, sir. Rick takes e6. Bro, what? Elevation. Are you serious? Bruh. Bro. Bruh. Seriously? Rook takes e6? That's your move. I know you're kidding right now. I know he kidding. He kidding. He gotta be. I'm not even going like... I know he kidding right Garbage. now. I know he kidding. Garbage. I know he's not even serious. He not serious. Queen c6. Yep. Okay. It's just a rook, right? Just a rook. Rook a to d1. Okay. Thanks for the follow. G1. Okay, let me look again. Yeah, you need to look 17 times, my guy. Don't even... Hey. To, when you got it, let us know. Rick takes e6. RLG says queen takes d5. I'm not even going to push the button. Not even going to push it. Ain't even worth it. Ain't even worth it. I ain't going to push the button. Brigade d1. Blocking with your face face. Correct. Correct. All right. Knight. Now, here's the, here's the engine moves. Here's the engine move. Engine says knight b6 is move number three. Move number two is queen d4, which I didn't like. And then you have knight to c3, which is move number one, which is strange. I'm like, knight c3? What the heck is this? Right? I mean, this, this pawn's hanging. Like, I'm not trying to give this up. So what I did here is a practical decision. As a human here, you want to get this pressure off of you. Like, h3 is kind of hanging. Excuse me. So I played queen e3. I'm like, yo, bro, trade him. Trade him. He played queen g6. I played bishop d3. He could have played bishop f5, which, of course, I can just do a little bit of maneuvering here and put the queen on d4 and stuff like that. But he didn't. He actually played queen h5, which I consider, and I knew he was going to do this. I knew he was going to go this route. And after queen h5, you got to be very careful or you in trouble. Queen h5 is on the board. Chat, what do you do about this one? What do you do right now? What do you do? Block the pawn push. Okay, so he's hitting h3. h3 is straight up hanging right now. Cobblestone with a g4. Got to be very careful here, y'all. g4 from Forza Chess. 
Be very, very careful here, y'all. I see two with G4, three with G4. Psych Pikachu says G4 as well. We have an H4 option for Mr. Charm. No G4, H4, H4, King F1. I'm not even gonna say nothing. I ain't gonna say nothing. I'm acting like I didn't read that one. Bishop at fives. G4 drops H4, correct? Um, a G, G4 drops H4, right? No, in fact, G4 does defend H3. H4 allows something to go into G4. Thanks for the follow, Orange Tango. Right, Queen takes E6. Yeah, you ain't even gonna get the button for that. Knight C5. King H2. Oh my. Garbage. Oh my goodness. So here, here's the move. In fact, I played G4 and I calculated this because his queen's trapped. Like he literally has no moves. And I'm up two pawns. Think about that. I'm up two pawns. His queen has no moves, but H4. And I follow up with queen to G3 to force a trade. If he doesn't trade, queen H6 loses a piece to G5. Boom. Right. Sheesh. Queen G5, then I hit him with F4 for the score. Oh my goodness. All right, get this man off the board. This is absolutely gross. What if Bishop takes G4? Correct, that's a great question. In fact, if Bishop takes G4, I'm just going to take these and I'm going to stare at you real hard. And then I'm in my head, I'm going to be thinking like, you 100%. Garbage. And then I might even say it to you after I beat you in this game. Garbage. Wow, okay. Now, after takes, Queen takes, or Knight takes G4 is going to be followed up with Queen to G3. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Queen takes g4, queen g3. I'm chilling. I'm chilling. You take with the knight. Oh, okay. Oh, that's cool. Oh, knights. Jeez. Okay. I see you. Wow. 100%. Wow. Oh, my goodness. Come on. This is over. This is over. This is over. Okay. Well, how about knight takes? How about knight takes then? Knight takes, pawn takes. You can't take with the bishop. Same thing. And if queen takes, I block. And I'm looking at you. I'm staring at you real hard. Very uncomfortable stare as you think about your move. Very uncomfortable. I'm going to make you very uncomfortable as you try to make your next move. This is over. So you can't sack. So queen h4 is the only move in this position. Right? After queen h4, then queen g3. And then he trades. And at this point, I knew that I could play for a huge win here. Huge win. Yes, I have double pawns. Which technically, okay, he's down two pawns, but I do have one doubled. That's totally fine. But this is an irrelevant side of the board. Like, this doesn't matter anyway. My whole idea is trying to queen one of my two past pawns. So, with that being said, guys, we got 40 moves from here. So, let's blow through some moves. He goes knight d7. I go bishop b5 with the intention of taking and playing knight b6. Rick A to B8. I take those anyway. Now, I did have this option here. And in fact, the engine says it is plus five after rook takes e6. And I saw this. I did see this 100%. But I did not want to give him a chance to get this back. Like, and this is what I checked at. I, I looked at this. I also thought, for some reason, I thought my rook, my bishop was trapped. After takes, and the engine says you're totally fine, obviously. But after bishop takes here, right? And I thought this bishop was trapped, but I actually have knight c5 right now. That's kind of crazy. G3 is not even that weak. That's right, cool prince. That's right. And and actually, well, the problem here with this is one thing. If I move the bishop, I actually am ending up being in equal position. Because look at this, right? You could immediately now give the piece right back. So I saw this line. So, um, but what I didn't see was knight c5. I also thought that after rook takes, rook takes, bishop takes, rook d7. Oh, sorry, not rook check. Rook to d7, I have to play like bishop f5 to defend c2. And then when he doubles, then I'm going to play bishop d3. With the intention of rook d2, he can't go rook e2, right? And then I could just kind of push the pawn through. I saw this as well, calculated it, considered it. But I really, I just thought that it was wrong. For some reason, I'm like, I'd rather go the easier route than try to figure this out and actually be wrong and be pissed if I draw this game. So after rook a to b8, I just took on d7, which is still plus 3.7. It ain't plus four, like rook takes e6 was, but this is still plus three. I'm up two pawns. He takes, then I put the knight on c5. We literally on autopilot. We got like 40 moves from here, so let's blow through some moves again. He puts the bishop back on e6, and for some reason, I thought after c3, he could play d4, right? You know, but he can't. In fact, after d4, I can just take it. So he can't take due to rook takes e8 and then coming back and picking up the bishop. So I did go c3. My idea here, play b4. Keep the knight wedged on c5. 
push the pawns they must be pushed pass pawns must be pushed put this rook on b1 play b5 b6 we walk into dogs in the park taking a stroll it's very easy game from here after c3 he goes king f8 and here i thought king f8 was really good showed that like yo he definitely knows some end games pretty well because i mean from here we still got like 40 moves bro from right here maybe like 35 close to 40 to be honest but this man was strong bro he made it very very difficult for me he played king f8 right i played b4 he go king e7 and weirdly enough i thought i was able to cross so i played king f2 but then when he played king here i'm like oh i can't go king e3 he gonna take on g4 and stare at me real hard king e3 bam i might still be winning this due to the pass pawns why would i give him this kind of play why in the on earth would i give him this kind of play i remember hikaru was analyzing this game i think oh really that's what's up hikaru was analyzing this game yeah rook takes e6 is absolute garbage absolute 1000 percent garbage i mean come on my guy what are you even thinking about in your life wow really you're just gonna give it back to him you might as well sign a score sheet like get up like just go home you done you ain't playing no more tournaments for a while yeah king d6 in fact what i did here was a little bit different the engine says rook a to d they also say rook e3 and a4 for some reason i didn't play a3 uh, a4 looking back at this now a4 is just a very easy move to make Another one. you said that rook takes e6 a few moves ago even a few moves ago is still 100 percent garbage Unless, you know, of course, like that line we looked at with rook takes e6 taking on d7. Yes, that is a possibility. Uh, parallax. Parallax. Thanks for the, the tier one, bro. That's 15 months. Wow, Parallax. 15 months. I appreciate you. You said after king f8. Yeah, I looked at actually king f8. You're talking about right here. Rook takes and then taking on d. Um, actually, sorry. King f8. Yeah, I saw this being a possibility, but I didn't. Like, check this out, right? Like, why would I give him this kind of position? Why would I do this? This is much harder to do. As opposed, first off, this could be annoying. And like, his king's close enough to stop these pawns. So you think you win it, but you actually not. You actually not, right? You actually not. I mean, you are. You're still winning. But there's a very big chance that you can mess this up. So I'd rather keep pieces on the board. So what I did here was just choosing the easier option. What, is, what gives me the better chance to win? Thanks for the follow, Truth Walker. So, b4, king e7. I play king e2, he went king d6, king e3, I can't cross. Cool, so I said, it's time to regroup and reroute. The knight's looking good here. I should have played a4, but I went knight b3. With the intention of putting the knight on a better square. Knight d4 and rook here. He goes rook c8, I go rook e3. He goes h5, which I'm like, man, this guy is pushing tight. And I didn't want to take this, to be honest. I didn't like after takes. Bishop takes, he has rook in, and if he takes this, I mean, now he has his own counterplay. So what I did is I just didn't take it at all. Sometimes you just don't want to give your opponent any counterplay. So I went king f3. He took, I took back, he played rook c4, attacking g4, and now I block it, knight to d4. Hitting e6 still, blocking g4. Rook b to c8, right? And then what do you play in this position, chat? c3 is hanging. c3 is hanging. What do you do? He's threatening this pawn. What do you do about it? He's threatening this pawn. He says it's not. Flame says it's not. A4 from Flame. What y'all got, chat? We take A4, the blocker. You have a fort. A4, C3, A hanging. Great job, chat. Great job. I try to get y'all so I can tell. I can... I can say some of y'all are 100%. Garbage. But you got that right. That's great. Very good. A4 is the move I chose. Because if Rook takes, then you play Knight B5. And we live. Get the man off the board. This is a family channel. So, I actually played A4. A4. Because it's, it's defended due to the tactic. He played Bishop D7, stopping Knight B5. Now I actually have to defend it. I played Rook A3. So my Rooks feel great. Right, and I mean, even from here, it's still another 30 moves. This guy played very strong. And right here, he played a move that I did not consider. I mean, I thought this was just an easy one. Easy one. Right here, this is what he hit me with right here. Rook takes d4. Whoa! See? Oh my goodness! Bro. 
I was I was getting a little frustrated because after he took, he made this very difficult. PJ Ness, thanks for the tier one, bro. I appreciate you, bro. Let's go. Let's go. Here, Let's go. Yeah. PJ Ness, thanks for that tier one. So I take on D4, obvious. He plays Rook C4. Here I had many options. I had many options here. What do you do, chat? What do you do? What do you do in this position right now? He made this very difficult for me. I'm not even going to lie. Right. Looks are very deceiving in chess. I know I have two pass pawns here. And many of you will botch this. Many of you will botch this game. Guaranteed. Sure. Um, sure you didn't give him the D pawn. Says Gene. You take a uh, man fake off. <laughs> Stop, shut up. A5. Thanks for the follow, T Smart. B5 maybe. Push him, baby. B5. Rook E to B. From Sos, A5. So, move number one is Rook E to B3. So that's for a draw. Rook number, uh, move number two is Rook E to D3. And move number three is A5. Now, B5 is not even considered. So, let's see. Is there anything wrong with B5? No, there's not. But the reason why B5 isn't that good is because the king is closer. And, and, and when you study in games, you'll start to understand this a lot more, too. Like, when you push the outside one, he is a little bit further away. Pushing the closer one, he's like a move away. So B5 isn't one of the best. It's just not a good one to play. And I didn't want to give up. If I give up the B pawn, I can. But like it's easy for him to defend the A8 square. So what I did is the first move here. Rook E to B3. Now I have two pawns that are backed by the rooks. In defense and offense, write this down. Write this down. Pause the video. Clip it. Right. You, if you're on YouTube watching it, save it. Right, this timestamp right here, right? It, 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 whether it's offense or defense, it doesn't matter. The best place for a rook to be is behind the pawn on defense and offense. So on offense here, I have both rooks behind the pass pawns. On defense, I need to be behind these pawns to control them the most. Now, it's even harder to do for it on the defense side if there's two pawns here like I have. So I went with that option of playing rook E to B3 understanding this observation and trying to push them boys my system aaron nimzowich big facts you know it you're the best streamer you're supposed to subscribe and follow let's go pj i appreciate you uh forgot to add that line in the book let's go vision you can add it you know when we done with these analysis for uh the tournament and we back to we back to tournament guidebook thanks for the follow road dog appreciate you bro so i go here he takes on d4 g4 is hanging i yes i know this Wow, that's crazy. And just says Rook B2. Oh, yeah, that makes sense. I didn't like Rook B2. And the reason being is because I'm trying, I was moving too fast. Not moving too fast, but I was just so anxious to queen. So anxious to queen. But I played Rook to B2. I mean, oh, Rook to B2 is the best move of the engine says the move number one. Don't forget to remind me. Yeah, send me a message right now, Vision. I mean, you can, you know, you got my number and, and Messenger and Discord. And then, you know, remind me and then I'll remind you. If, if Harold Black was just resigned, to be honest. Yeah, but I mean, look, he fought like a monster. You know what I'm saying? He fought like a monster. Gabriel, what's up, bro? Thanks for the follow. Why Rook B2? Because it stops the second check, which I completely understand where Rook B2 is. There's, there's a lot of checks, right? What I did is I played B5 because now I'm just going for it. I'm just going. And the reason why I didn't play A5, I think I was just annoyed by Bishop B5, but I think I could play A6. But I played b5. He took on g4. But now, when my king goes back, because if I, I can't go e3, but then there's another check, and then I go here, and then there's another check. Like, there's all these checks. But rook b2 stops all of that, no matter what, if I put my king back. So I did go king f2. He checked me. I went king e3, and he went rook g2. And here, I was actually afraid. I went king f4 in this position. But the engine just says, bro, just play b6. Just play b6. And for some reason, I felt like I was, it was, you know, looks are very deceiving in chess. And this just, B6 didn't feel right. It just didn't, it didn't feel right, bro. I even thought, like, I might even get mated. And some issues, like, or some variations, there's like an F6, G6, walk the king. And watch how he did this, bro. Like, I guarantee some of y'all would have got mated or something would have happened. So this is why chess is hard. Correct. Correct. So I played king F4, hitting the bishop. He went bishop D1. I'm like, why is he fighting me like this? Bro, are you kidding me? I was literally sitting here getting pissed off, bro. I was like, yo, this guy, this guy is making me so mad. 
right now because there's like a check and a check option and then i might even get made it if there's many cases where you literally might get made it and i'm gonna show you where that is in here it was a scary mate i saw now the engine believe it or not here chat what do you think the engine says right now i thought that this was not correct because i was like nah i'm not trying to do this and then get it and then we end up drawing and everybody looking at me like i'm crazy or i would have been pissed i would have been so mad so uh, we have B6, we have Rick B4, we have B6 again. Okay. Okay. He created an imbalance. Correct. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Rick B4 actually was scary because of King C5. Now he's actually threatening to push, right? My king's almost in a box. I need a good Rook move. I mean, this isn't that fun. But B6 is the move, believe it or not. I was like, B6, wow. And if takes... Rook takes, and now I'm actually just about to queen. But for some reason, I just thought this was wrong. Like, I didn't see this. I, I really thought he was able to catch me. But looking at this now, it's always like there's so many thoughts and jitters in your brain and stuff going on when you're playing it over the board. But looking at this now, it makes total sense. Like, how do you stop this? How do you stop? Rick here? I push, right? It doesn't matter. Everything wins. Literally everything wins. The engine right now says it's plus 12, bro. It's plus 12. All right. So, I mean, I made th this is move 50, and I could have went, you know, I went another 20 moves because I didn't go with P6. For some reason, I just thought it didn't work. And so I went Rick D3 instead. Right. And then he went Bishop C2. And here, I was like, bro, where do I move? And the reason I said this is because here's what I looked at. If he goes here, I saw a D4. And I'm like, bro, I'm not trying to deal with this. I either got to sack the Rook. I don't like Rook F3. Like, he's about to continue to push because now he can queen. So imagine if you mess this up, how bad you're going to feel. It's one of those, like, you think about, you know what, should I do this right now? Should I do this? Like, should I should I do this right now? Yeah, I'm going to do it. Bruh. And then flip the whole table, right? Just flip the whole table and flex real hard and then throw the water. Like, just throw it across the room and walk out if you lose this game. Or you even draw this game. Because I'm like, yo, I'm not trying to allow this to happen. Like, this didn't feel good. It was looking kind of scary. In fact, I was a little frightened. I was like, bro, I'm not feeling this. So, what I did here was rook a2. To pin the bishop. To pin the bishop here. Yeah, good job, God. Yeah. How, how were you doing on time? I was up. I was up. I probably had under an hour. I had under an hour, but I had way more time than he did, though. But under an hour. Uh, so I play Rick A2, pin it, and then he plays the next move here, which is Rick E2. I'm like, that's a good move. This man playing good. I'm like, dang. So now I have a few choices here. Rook E3 surprisingly is a move. Wow, that's crazy. I actually saw this line. Let me show y'all something. If Rook E3, I saw G5, right? Actually, no, I think it was Rook check first, right? And I thought I was getting mated in here. Oh, this is a perfect example right here. It says if I go king g5, I'm losing immediately after f6, right? And losing, by the way, not winning. King is, is guarded here. If I go king g4, he checks me and then he takes my rook. <laughs> Bro, like I'm, I was pissed. I was pissed. I knew something like this could happen. So I was on the radar for it. I was so mad. I'm like, how is he getting away? Like, what the heck is this? Right, and then if king g4, same thing, bishop f5, immediately, right? So I have to play rook f3, and I didn't like this. I saw g5, and just says this is okay. But after king e3, is this not working? Oh, you just take the rook. Oh, wow, I'm tripping. Yeah, I definitely tripped there. For some reason, I thought I had to take this, and but I could just take the rook. <laughs> I just take the rook. But this is what I was afraid of, to be honest. So what I did, though, is I chose a different move. I went here, defending my rook. I just defended it. And this is what made it a little bit difficult. Then he played d4. Played d4, and I went king f3. Right, with the intention of, if he goes d3, what do you do, chat? If he goes d3, what do you do? What do you do here? Tired brain. Yeah, absolutely, bro. Absolutely. We're pushing all this time, all this energy here. There's a lot going on. If he goes d3, what do you do right now? right now the alan johan you got it that's right take the bishop okay take the bishop okay all right take the bishop 
take the pawn. Yeah, it's take the, it's take the pawn. Rook takes d3. And this is a 100% winning end game. You need to study your end games, bro, because this is vital. I understood that this is a winning end game no matter what. And he can never go here because I'm going to queen. So my whole idea is just go up here, end up taking these pawns and win the end game. Because you can never go here because I'm going to queen. You can never get back. So it doesn't matter. So I knew that was going to be a possibility. So he played rook h2. He saw that, obviously. And then at this point, I'm like, you know what? It's that time. I played b6. He played king e5. And then here, I could just take on c2. Which again, like, why didn't I do this? Rook takes c2. b7 can't be right, right? Yeah, b7 is losing. But a5 is just winning. But, you know, you got to be careful. And you have to count this right. a5 did not seem winning for some reason. I just was like, you know what? I don't know. And I'm not trying to be. I want to be sure. I don't want to be unsure. Oh, it looks like it's winning. And then you draw the game and be pissed, right? So after that, I played g4. Because I knew, and you know, it's funny, guys. Like, he had this weird check. And I thought I was getting made it somehow. Like, a5. Oh, wow, that's crazy. It is mate. Oh, my goodness. A5 is mating. <laughs> Bro, you see what I'm saying? This is why A5, you get mated. Oh, my goodness. Bishop D1. You see how, like, Pablo, hey, he had a rough tournament. But look at this mate. I would have been going on his YouTube channel. And he don't even have one. This is gross. I probably would have withdrew. It's time to go home. Bishop D1. <laughs> Garbage, gar garbage, garbage, garbage. <laughs> Wait, oh my goodness. I think that's the, the knock, the, I think Naka mentioned that mate. Yeah, yeah, look at this. Come on, bro, this is gross. This is gross. It's time to go home. You done for a long time. So I played G4, because I'm like, yeah, nah, dog. There's got to be some type of mate. Flip the table. Oh, yeah, I'm flipping the whole table. Right, I might even, you know, flip the table. He look at me crossy one time before he say something and then walk out and go home because you ain't going to be invited to no more tournaments, big fella. It's a wrap for you. Get the man. Wow. Bruh. Right. So, you know, G4. I played G4 because I wasn't about to let that happen to me, you know, on national television. So G4, he checked me. Right. I go King G3 hitting the rook. Hitting the rook. He moves. Rook H1 right and i'm like bro how is he fighting me like this i'm sitting here getting i'm i'm literally starting to boil right i'm starting to get a little mad i'm like okay hold it in can't he don't knock these pieces over just finish this game just beat him okay don't say nothing don't grunt don't knock nothing over don't throw no water on your mans don't flip the table don't say nothing crazy just focus focus because i was getting mad i was getting mad bro I was like, oh, why, are we, why are we still playing this game? Right, so I played Rook A1. Rook A1, because this check is extremely annoying. So now, after Rook H6, finally, I can push a pawn. I play A5. I didn't even take a second chance. And after F5, don't be careful here, right? You try to play A4, and you are here looking crazy. I mean, F4 check, King F2. Apparently, this is still winning by the engine, but I'm not giving him no type of counterplay like this at all. So, after after he played f5, what you think I did? You're going to take it. Don't even think twice about it. Eliminate more pawns. He takes, and then I wanted to get rid of this bishop next, because I know if I get rid of this bishop, I'm queenie. I'm queenie. All right? So, I checked him. He goes king f5. Then I go rookie one with the intention of sacking and not even thinking twice about it. Rook e1, he goes rook g6. King f2, rook f6. Right? If I if I stay here, I mean, it's a perpetual, like, very easy perpetual in the same little box. So I go king e2. I saw all of this. He goes king d5. And now, chat, finish it off. Right? We got, like, uh, 10, 11 moves left. 10, 11 moves left. Finally, I reach a position where I'm like, oh, I can breathe. I'm not, this isn't terrible, like. I'm feeling a little bit better about this. Let's convert. Let's convert. We got elevation with B7. Forza. B7. Papano with B7. VJ with B7. Parallax with B7. 1000% right, chat. It is B7. So now I'm telling you, hey, bro, do something about this pawn. He goes D3 check, and I look at him. Then I flex real hard in my head. 
And then I play the move. What do you play, chat? B3 on the board. What do you do? Let's see. Rook E3. Rook takes D3 from elevation. King D2. Okay. King D2. King E3. Okay. You guys are all correct. In fact, I think King E3 is the only move that is, is the worst out of the three, but... I mean, it doesn't, like, it really doesn't matter. Actually, in fact, everything's winning. Rook takes d3 is what I chose, though, because I knew, based off in-game studies and understanding how far these pawns are, there is no way he can he can stop me. So he takes it, I take back, he hits me with a check. Last-ditch effort. I do have king to c2. I actually just went the e2 route, which is sort of the same. King e2, he played rook b3. Defending or attacking b7. Remember what we talk about. The best defense or offense for a rook is or for a rook with pawns is behind it behind it so he's he has the behind defense it is white to move chat what do you do finish this off finish this off this should be very simple i don't want to see nothing else in the chat but this move right here okay we got a6 rook b1 from flame oh my are you serious Bruh. rook b1 Garbage, garbage, garbage. Oh my goodness. Garbage. Rook to B1? Garbage. Wow. Rook B1. I mean, I guess you probably still could win. Let's just see. Dang. Oh, it's terrible. Oh, you getting destroyed. After hearing an A6, King C6, and he's staring at you real hard. Very uncomfortable, Sarah. Very uncomfortable. Very uncomfortable stare. So, in fact, the move is just a6 chat. Very easy move to make. A6, pass pawns must be pushed. A7 coming next, queening one of them. He say he tries the last this effort. Rick B2 check. I go king f3 with the intention of if he checks me, then I'm just going to go up. This way he checks me again, and now you have no checks. So this would have looked like this. He didn't do this, but this is what it would have looked like. He runs out of checks. G6, I'll just take, and Rook check, I mean, whatever, he goes back, and I'm queening anyway. It literally didn't happen. Like, it would have been easy. He didn't do that, though. In fact, after King F3, he goes King to C6. All right, chat. King C6 on the board. How you finish this? He trying to make this very hard for you. Literally the only way you can lose this. Correct, Sash Beats. I wasn't about to let that happen. I wasn't about to let that happen. A7 from GP. Okay, A7! <laughs> Okay. Right, and JT Grassman, A7. Good job. 100% garbage. Absolute garbage. garbage. Not a move. What are you doing? Garbage. How? You need to study your end games right now. You know what? Go study them right now. Go study them right now. Like, leave. Go study your end games right now. It's 120 in the morning over here, Eastern Time. Go study your end games. Because this is terrible. I'm, I'm appalled at A7 right now. I am appalled that you even thought about A7. And then after a Rick B3 check first, it doesn't matter, whatever you can do. And then we could take on B7 with the king, actually. And then it's a draw. Yikes. Jeez. So, in fact, the only move here, not only, but the best, is Rick C1 check. If the king goes to the B file, obvious queen. If And if not... Right, King D7 is what he chose. And I was trying to be very clever here. I was like, what if I just go Rook C8 first and then Queen? But it's the same thing if I go A7 and then Queen. So I realized that this is the same no matter what. I can go Rook C8 and then Queen, or I can just push and Queen. But regardless, I'm still going to be left with the Queen and a Rook versus a Rook and a Pawn. So I chose A7. And at this point, he stood up and knocked all the pieces off the table, right? And then he just dipped out. Bruh. Nah, that's what he wanted to do, but he actually just resigned right here. The game was over. A7, and he resigned. And this game was over. That was a wrap, right? And this was a dub. This was round four. I got a dub. Round four against Pablo. It was a very long game. It was a grind. Such a grind. But it was well worth it. You ever swing on it? No, no, bro. Never, never RLG. I don't think they want them problems, though, anyway. That's a rapster. That's right, Kimchi. Man had heart. He did. He had heart, bro. 
He had heart. I would have lost his position. It happens. Did you win the whole tourney? I did not, but I did tie for like third or fourth, whatever. Let's go. Let's get it. GG Canty. Yes, yes. What's his rating? 2286, I think. That was his feed rating at the time. I think he dropped like 40 points, to be honest. But he was like 2286. International Master, I am. But, uh, um, yeah. So, yeah, but this was round four, guys. I mean, this was crazy. Make sure you guys watch the replay if you enjoyed it. Of course, you're on YouTube. Make sure you check the playlist. Watch the first three rounds as well. I appreciate y'all watching. Um, and uh, make sure you hit that, that subscribe button for more content like this. And I'm going to see you guys for round five tomorrow on the next one. I'll see you guys on the next video.